What's happening, everybody? I'm John Ryan from IGN here with my good friend and Metal Gear cohort, Vincent Janito. Hey! How's it going, Vince? Doing good, buddy. How are you? I'm really good. Uh, yeah. Now, we're looking at the FOB, uh, the forward operating base stuff, uh, basically managing it uh, and what you it might be looking at that. I'm looking at a dog. Well, you're looking at a dog right now. We were, are going to be looking at that. Um, <laughs> So why don't we pop up on our iDroid. Uh, cool. So for those unfamiliar, FOB is a forward operating base. It's basically the multiplayer version or multiplayer component to uh, Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain. Correct. And Vince, this is a super in-depth system that I know almost nothing about. Yeah, it's really in-depth. Um, it's, it's super good. Uh, I really uh, love what they've done with it. Um, It'd be nice if it was a little more stable than it is right now. Yeah, but, well, that's uh, kind of why I don't know anything about it is sure. because the servers have been down for the last couple of days. Yeah, I, I, I've gotten a bunch of matches, actually, because uh, it hasn't always been down. But, yeah, it is, it is definitely a little bit tough to, to, get, uh, to get into. So It seems like even when I go online, they still have got have messages being like, hey, guess what? Servers are going to be down tomorrow for maintenance. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's been a lot. But let's, let's dig into what, what this mode is and what it does. So... Um, here is the is the security settings uh, page, which is an important one. So this is where you can look at. Basically, I can go through a log here of of attacks that have been made on my base. Yep. Um. So we're seeing this defense against uh, Orion Omega. <laughs> Orion Omega. Oh no. Uh, yeah, he messed me up. He killed some guy. Yep. And this is cool. It shows you a log of, another guy. of where they where they went. Uh, it kind of gives you like a heat map, sort of of like where they went, what they did. It's like the play-by-play -play from like Evolve or something. Exactly, where you it's can just see the the path of destruction that whoever is attacking you is. Uh, is absolutely, it's just like that. It's just like that. So from here, I can also uh, jump in and to, I can choose different platforms. Right now, I just have this one, just my command platform on my first uh, FOB. So we'll jump in here and take a look at the settings. Now, this is important to understand the difference between the basic settings and advanced settings. You would think that these are the same settings, except one of them applies them. Oh. No, I'm sorry. This is exactly, actually, as you would think it is. Basic settings are very simple. All you do is you say, hey, every time someone invades, yep. this is how much money I want to spend on defending. Each per defense. Yeah, per defense. So it's yeah. not like you pay, you know, let's say you want the highest level of rank. So it's not like you pay 260000 one time and then just forever your base is super well defended. It's each time someone invades you, you're going to spend two hundred sixty grand to make sure that you have the best possible defense. That seems to be the way it works. It's, it's all, I'll, some of this, I'll, I'll say, like, I love FOB, but some of it is a little bit tough muddled. to, yeah, it's a little muddled. Yeah, it's a little, uh, not as, uh, not as transparent as it could be. Um, but I believe that's, that's how much you're, I'm going to assume right now, based on everything that I've seen, that that's the amount you're spending right. every time, which means that defending your base can get very expensive. Yeah, I mean, that's a quarter of a million dollars each time somebody sure. shows up. Uh, right, and even if it's, that's just, the, even if that's just daily, or you know that's a that's yeah. a lot. Um, I mean or, that's four or five research projects. Right. Or even if that's that's what you have to pay every time you fail, but you don't pay it if you succeed. Yeah. Still, it it costs all that stuff costs money. Um, all right. So here's where it can be a little bit confusing. Once you uh, once you go into the advanced settings, it gives you the options for all decks or first deck. Um, again, you would think that this would be the same options, except one of them applies it globally to all your decks. Right now, your FOB right now only has the one platform. I only have correct? the one platform exactly. I haven't done a lot of leveling up of my uh, of my uh, of my FOB yet. But if you go into all decks, you'll see that you have settings for uh, weapon type, which you can switch between lethal and non-lethal. Um, so that kind of will determine whether or not you can, whether or not guards will equip non-lethal versions of the weapons that you're that you're um, that you're denoting. Right to now, use. is it possible to capture somebody else? I don't think that's a thing that you, you can't permanently to do. capture them, but you can you can Fulton them if you. Uh, if Interesting. You, yeah, you can you can absolutely Fulton them if you knock them out. Um, I don't know what the actual incentive uh, for that is. Shame. <laughs> Shame for sure for bragging rights. Absolutely, is attaching attaching your enemy to uh, to a balloon is, yeah, is always exactly. good. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, so there's that, and then you get to also determine what the overall uh, guard rank range is going to be for uh, the guards that you want. Basically, the maximum guard uh, rank that you want used on your right. uh, on your base. Uh, I've put S for for mine. And I then know this will pull. That's going to pull guards from your security team. Uh, which you unlock after you open the first like FOB training mission. Correct, right? correct. So uh, it's actually it doesn't just pull from your security team. Actually, it actually in, in, in actuality it pulls from your entire uh, combat unit oh, uh, as a whole because the the security team is considered a subdivision of the combat unit. Right. Um, what the 
The reason you want to put guys into your uh, defense uh, team, though, is because the higher the rating of the defense team, it unlocks certain research projects that you wouldn't normally right. have. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so yeah, I can determine the, uh, the security device grade and equipment grade. So basically, it's like, you know how you have assault, assault rifles of different kinds? Hey, yep. there's a grade one, a grade three, grade four. Yep. Um, this determines like which, like which, what's which the level maximum of equipment grade. they have. Exactly. So if I have my guys using like a particular submachine gun or particular AR, um, if I have this down to one, they'll only use the grade one version. If you um, have it developed that. If I, have, if, I, if I have it developed, whereas if I put it up to three, it'll then use the grade three version. So you want right. to be careful with this because if you put, if you're like, yeah, I want grade five stuff. Well, guess what? You're like you're paying a lot of extra money for stuff that for you security, don't... but you might not have grade five stuff to use, so you're right. wasting money. So yeah, make sure that if if you do put pump this up, that you actually have equipment of That's that level that you want to use. For. Yeah, yeah. So then there's the range type, which is you know uh, close, mid, and long, and this actually determines what kinds of weapons they're going to generally use. So mid range is going to be stuff like ARs, you know. Um, Close yeah. range is going to be, you know, uh, uh, machine guns and stuff. Yeah, so since Close you only have the one platform, you don't necessarily want to give them all long range, but you don't want everyone walking around with a sniper rifle if they've sure, only got, like, two sure. hallways to walk down. Absolutely. That, that's going to play into how you position your guys as well, which we'll get into in a second. So, yeah, generally mid-range is really good. Long range is going to use sniper rifles and rocket launchers, things like that. Close range, more SMGs and shotguns, which can be very disruptive. But in any case, these options are actually exclusive to when you're looking at the the all platforms section of the uh, of the advanced uh, of the advanced settings, right? Uh, so all decks. If you go into first deck or at one specific deck, you still have these options, which were in which were already in the uh, old one, which is you get to determine how many out of a maximum you place of each of these different resources. So you've got guards, and then you've got after the guards. You've got a number equipment. of different equipment uh, pieces, and this is not stuff that you've stolen in the field. By the way, this is not like this your is stuff that you've developed. Exactly, these no. are not your gun emplacements. The gun emplacements, mortars, those are placed automatically, and but if they get stolen from you, then then they then get you have to go back and get more. From they the get field. replenished by from your stock, and if you don't have stock right. of them, then you won't have them on on your map. Gotcha. Um, but these are more things you actually have to develop, and then once you develop them, you determine how many you want to use, and of course, the more you use. Obviously, the more secure you're going to be, but the more you use it, also the more money it costs you. Right. So right, right now, I actually haven't uh, I haven't developed anti theft security cameras or any kind of UAVs. Um, I did just develop infrared sensors. Um, Ooh. So I'm, I'm yeah. So I'm using two of those. And then most interestingly, I think the coolest part of this is that is this part right here, the key security zones. So I can actually choose. Um, which zones are going to be kind of like the top priorities in uh, on my on my base? So, like, if you say, you know, I want zone F to be priority number one, that's where most of your guards will go. That's where a bunch of your equipment will get laid out. Yes, it's gonna, it's it's gonna. You, you don't get to precisely place things in this, right? Which I kind of like to agree because I don't, I wouldn't want to spend all that time micromanaging everything yeah. about it because that's that, that's just such a. But you that, can give general areas. Like, I want a couple of security cameras and maybe a mine over here. Yep. And this is where, and this is where looking at your failed defense log can really help. Because right now, as that failed defense log is playing, I'm seeing the path the person took through my, you know, through my base, and that gives that kind of informs for me, like, oh, the person, the people are generally spawning on this side, yep. and they're taking this route. So hey, this is how I'll cover it. Um, so I think that's really smart that you get to do uh, that. You, that you get to get get that granular uh, with it. So. This is just the the settings, the, the defense settings. Let's take a look at, uh, you mentioned that you can develop some items. Yes, you so can. So let's have a look at what you can develop specifically for the FOB stuff, because I'm right. assuming that it's different than your traditional It is. It's a different stuff. arm. So you go under development, you look at security devices, um, and then you're going to be treated to like a, kind of a, a very similar menu that you've seen before. Everything is graded. Interesting to note, you might notice, um, this is another important thing, there are no grade one or two security devices so if, you're, if you select grade one or two security that just means all you're going to have on that platform is guards exactly so that's an important thing to to think about when you're when you're budgeting out like how how you want to protect your yeah. your base if you want to use any of this stuff you need to have uh, at least grade three uh made available um so yeah here's the ir sensors um anti-theft device this is something that if someone tries to fulton uh away uh one of your pieces of equipment it'll actually uh create an alert so that people can uh, can see Ooh. Uh, 
that that's uh, that that's happening. And what are the requirements for that one again? Or the surveillance camera, for example? So the requirements here, uh, obviously a certain amount of GMP, uh, which I don't have right now because I'm right. poor. Oh, um, and then what happened? <laughs> I know. Dude, I was I mean, so rich. I, I was really rich, and then I started uh, unlocking a lot of the non-lethal uh, uh, gear, specifically that you can give to your dudes, actually, uh, gotcha. on the FOB, which I'm going to show that in a second. So, yeah, you can see my R&D team needs to be up at a certain level, which I have that requirement. But there you see the security team requirement that I was talking about before. And right. this is the main reason why you want to allocate dudes off of your, um, off of your, your main combat unit. Uh, to the security unit, uh, because even though it's the same pool of people, um, upgrading the level of your security team allows you is what allows you to unlock a lot of the more right. advanced, uh, more advanced. And stuff. you can still do the same uh, thing that I like to kind of cheat the system, where if you have like a bunch of guys who are well suited to combat or R and D uh, in other units, you can just bump them over to yeah. the security team temporarily. Absolutely, uh, like it's never. It's never permanent. Like you said, you bring it over, you have them develop it, and if you want, you move it back. And that's right. not cheating. That's just, like, part of the resource management of the I game. I spent so much time just doing that. But the only problem then is, like, you're stuck into whatever the development time is. Like, so if it's right, 20 right. minutes, you've got to wait 20 minutes to either do nothing or have your R&D team be down a bunch of guys. Or, or you spend 20 minutes going and, like, you know, hitting the, hitting the open world and farming mats and, exactly. you know, and having, having uh, a blast. Or you can be building more... FOBs, right? Because uh, that's something that we actually didn't cover: is how to actually build yourself a forward operating base. Now, this opens up later on in the story. I think it's after mission twenty-one or twenty-two, right? Um, that you'll actually have the ability to build up an FOB. So it's under the base development tab, right? Yes, correct. Uh, and then if now you've already got one built, right? So I have um, this one built, and you can see uh, the FOB. Like I, we, we want to kind of make clear for everyone, like. It is you essentially another mother base. It's another mother base in every way. It's not like you're paying. People are panicked right now, kind of about microtransactions. And uh, like, I understand like being worried. Like, you never want that kind of stuff. Well, to you get don't gross. want anything to be locked behind some kind of paywall right. or but, anything. Right. But like, you get this first FOB completely for free, and this FOB is 100% like complete parity with like an actual mother base. So yeah. you have now all this extra room for uh, for expansion, and all this stuff costs a lot of in of the in-game money, just like mother base does. So I haven't even I've I've seen everything pretty much story wise. There is to see in this yeah. game at this point. I've, I've done all the main quests, all the main side quests. And you still have a lot to and do. And I still could – there's still so much more money and resources I could spend to fully upgrade my main mother base, let alone my forward operating base, right. let alone having multiple ones. And I mean the only thing that you know, people were a little bit worried about the microtransactions. The only thing that you really have to use that for is if you want to construct a second or a third platform. Right, right? which you can do here. Right, and that – the currency that you need – to do that with is delivered like once a week. Well, it's it's once every couple of days. It's like oh, the first okay, then. you get you get it's a login bonus uh, that that scales. So it's like first day and third day, and then I think fifth day you also get you you also get login bonuses uh, of of uh, coins. And it's not like a ton of coins, but if you again, it's gonna take a long time for me to max even just my regular mother base, right? Let alone my forward operating base, and I can't imagine a world in which. I can't imagine a world in which I have this maxed in an amount of time where I'm like, well, now I want another forward operating base, but I don't have enough coins. Right. Like, and the interesting thing about about purchasing new waters and looking for n new places to go, this is an interesting dynamic of of the of the system. You can see over on the side, it shows the location and it shows yep. the material deposits. So what's interesting about this is um, you can see different. Uh, there's Did all. Did you build yours in the North Atlantic first? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I did too. Because um, I want to. I want to be able to go to Canada real easy. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And there's also, like, they all have different profiles as far as, like, what their mineral deposits around right. them are. And this is, like, you know, your base development unit, one of their jobs is to go around the, the surrounding area and just automatically at intervals procure resources yep. for you. So what this is, what, the, what these uh, profiles determine is how much of, how rich uh, in deposits around you uh, these things are. And again, to be clear, like, to head off any like, oh, it's pay to win type stuff. Like it really is. It really isn't. Like some of these are slightly more expensive than the others, but the like the, none of them are more functional. Like even the most expensive one, which is like, ooh, look, it has S rank in in fuel three bio things. in three things. It also has no deposits of two other things. Right. So like everything is kind of balanced in that way. Like look, this one's a good overall. All it's got B's and C's and everything, but no A's or S's. Right. You know, this one has S in one thing and B's in two, but then a C and D in others. Yeah. All of it's very balanced. Balance. So it's not like you're like it's not like you're gonna feel like hey if I want the best mother base uh, the best uh, what, uh, new FOB I'm gonna have to shell out like tons of money or grind for that. Well, much no, and also realistically by the time you're ready 
to build another forward operating base after, you know, building up your first one with other platforms and security forces, you're probably going to have accrued enough uh, Mother Base coins on your own just by waiting for those for Yeah, those just logins. by locking in every day. And, and, uh, and not even play. That's the thing. It's just logging in. It's like you don't even have to win or play or yeah, do anything. Yeah, you just to pop it. into the game and then pop out if you don't want to play. But why wouldn't you want to play? Right. And the nice thing about it, too, is that, like, while you can't defend or invade your mother, uh, other, you can't defend your own forward operating base or invade others when you're not around. Right. Um, if you happen to have gotten invaded um, while, like, say, you were uh, busy doing something else and you didn't respond to it, and you uh, you still get rewards for successful defenses. So if you're if someone tried to invade and you're um, and all on your own uh, on its own strength, your defenses succeeded. You get. Like a these are all stuff. That's rewards great. I'm getting. I got from that one successful defense I had. So it's cool too because you want to log in not just to get your daily rewards, um, but also but to pick up all the other resources that you're getting from just having the things exist. Exactly. Cool. Oh, and some new volunteers as well for for success for for having a successful defense, which is pretty cool too. Excellent. Yeah, man. Well, Vince, thank you so much for taking us through this ludicrously complex <laughs> but amazingly fun system. Oh I'm yeah, cool, I'm really excited to to dive into this and really. Really crush my friends to the to oh, yeah. you know, the last of their spirit. That's what video games are all about: destroying friendships. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, for everything else on destroying friendships <laughs> and Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, Vince, where are we sticking around to? Right here on IGN.